Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today, we are discussing the topic of writing software patent applications in view of Alice. And I'm not talking about this Alice, or this Alice. I'm talking about this Alice, Alice Corporation versus CLS Bank International. It is an important court case in recent years that has shaped the way software patents are examined. So before we get into that, let's talk about a certain section of U.S. patent law called Section 101, 35 United States Code 101. This covers the topic of what type of things are allowed to receive patent protection. Certain things are ineligible for patent protection. That means they can't be patented. Examples of such Things that can't be patented are typically naturally occurring things like seashells, rocks, and icebergs, abstract processes like multiplication and division. A 101 rejection in a patent application from the patent office means that your claimed invention is rejected because the claimed subject matter is not eligible for patent protection. And this Alice court decision has made it a little bit more difficult for software patent applications to get allowed because it makes it easier for the patent office to issue these 101 rejections on software types of uh, patent applications. So the question is, if you have a invention now that you're working on that you're thinking about filing a patent application on that's software related, you're probably going to ask the question, is software patentable? Well, Maybe. Sometimes. It could be. One thing that is certain is that if you don't file a patent application on your invention, you're guaranteed not to get a patent. So depending on your business case and what you're doing, it may be worthwhile to try. There are examples today of patents being issued in the field of software. So it does continue to happen. The Alice decision basically created a two-part test for patent eligibility. So this is a test that the examiner or a judge may look at to see if something is eligible for patent protection. The first part is, is the claim directed to an abstract idea? If it's not an abstract idea, then good news, the claim is patent eligible. If it is directed to an abstract idea, it might still be eligible for patent protection. For that, we have to move on to part two. Part two basically says, are the claim elements considered individually and as a ordered combination significantly more than the abstract idea? If so, then good news, the claim is patent eligible. Now, what is significantly more? This term is quite subjective. Like many things in the field of uh, patent examination, there is some subjectivity involved. However, we can try to get a sense of what significantly more means by studying some recent examples in the courts where uh, a software patent was upheld or deemed to be patent eligible. So let's take a look at two uh, well-known court cases. The first case is DDR Holdings versus hotels. And the claims at issue were directed to a technique of using a hyperlink to display a host website which has a linked product advertisement and of a third party provider webpage which has purchasing information about the advertised product where the third party provider webpage is dynamically generated and retains the look and feel of the referring host website. So let's visualize what this is really doing. So here we're using a hypothetical example to illustrate what this patent is all about that was challenged in the courts and uh, reviewed under these Alice guidelines. So we have a, uh, a website hosted by this culinary club food purchasing website. So this is a website that sells food and there's a banner advertisement for these gumballs up top. Now the user says, hmm, I'd like to have some of these gumballs. I'm going to click on this ad. Now, what would happen before this invention came along, according to them, is that you would then be taken to the Yummy Gumballs website. Well, this invention basically um, creates a new web page that makes it look like you're still on the Culinary Club website. 
so that it provides better continuity and a smoother shopping experience for the online shopper. So when they click on this, they get basically something that looks like they're still on the original website. That's the idea. So this was being challenged as being patent in ineligible for being abstract. The court found that the unconventional usage of the hyperlink satisfied the two, step two of the eligibility test um, and overcame a problem specifically arising in the context of the Internet, that is, keeping control over the attention of a website viewer. Because when a viewer is redirected to a different website, they might not be happy about that or it might distract them. So this invention basically helped keep the continuity that when they click on the banner ad, they still think they're on the same website. So this was basically improving the technical field of e-commerce. And because of that, it was considered to be a patent eligible subject matter. Okay, so the next court case we're going to talk about quickly is Enfish LLC versus Microsoft. The claims at issue relate to an improved database architecture using a self-referential logical table, which the patent describes as providing increased efficiency and flexibility in data management. And here we show an example of this uh, table, one of them from the patent at issue here. And we could see that there's columns that refer back to other records within the same database. So the court found that the claims at issue are not directed to an abstract idea. So here we're talking about part one of that two-part test. Rather, they are directed to a specific improvement to the way computers operate embodied in the self-referential table. So basically, again, improving the technical field of computer operation. So we are seeing a pattern here that in some cases, if it can be shown that the software is improving some tangible technical thing, then it can be favorable for the uh, patent holder. So what does this mean for writing your patent application? Okay, so if we're writing a new patent application now, knowing what we know about Alice, because keep in mind that many of these, uh, these patents that have had to undergo an Alice challenge, including the ones we just talked about, were written way before the Alice decision. They, some of them go back to the 1990s. So um, they may not have had all the teachings that can help you overcome it. But now that we know that Alice is here and we're writing a new software patent application, what, are, what if anything, can we do or keep in mind as we're writing it to help give us a chance to... Uh, to overcome an Alice rejection. And I must say that this uh, is an evolving area because the patent law changes, new court cases come out that affects the way things are interpreted. But based on what we know today, uh, here are a few tips that may be helpful for writing a software patent application. If you are working with data, don't just manipulate the data, do something with it. Okay, so make that data affect a machine, affect a process. Uh, if it's manufacturing a widget, make it change the widget to make the widget better or make it faster. Uh, but just rearranging data uh, is often not enough. Indicate and emphasize how your approach is an improvement over the existing art. When you have your invention, emphasize why it is better than what is out there, and be sure to stress that. Where possible, include some tangible output of your process. So if your process controls something, then have uh, a thorough description of what it controls and what it does and what the result is in there. So for example, if you are working on uh, something, software that controls a 3D printer, you know, go into detail about how the output of that 3D printer, the object that it prints, is changed or improved or created quicker or with less errors or more resolution or what have you because of your data manipulation. So those are the tips that uh, we have today for if you are working on a software-based application. 
And uh, hopefully you find this interesting and helpful. And thanks again for checking out this episode of Inventors Quick Tips. Thank you.